Hello, welcome to the Monday, February 14th, 2022 edition of the Sands and the Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier has been hunting for ISO files that are being embedded in HTML and uh, found another uh, way how these ISO files are being obfuscated. The latest example is apparently not at all recognized by any antivirus based on virus total, and it does encode the data as HTML ID attributes. The document contains a number of paragraph tags. Each one of them has an ID attribute, and then JavaScript will just iterate through these paragraph tags, extracting the ID attributes, and then decode them to an invoice.iso file that's then presented to the user for download. And to make things even more interesting, the ISO file does not include an executable, but instead yet another Visual Basic script that then is executed to load additional malware. And the DLL that's being downloaded is hosted on the Discord uh, CDN, which is yet another sort of trick that's commonly used in order to make detection more difficult. Well, to fight some of the exploits that may now be launched by malware like this, we do have for a while now Microsoft's attack surface reduction tool that's a part of its Windows Defender. And a good part here is ASR, the attack surface reduction tool, is getting better and better. One of the changes that Microsoft uh, published on Friday is actually preventing access uh, to the LSAS process. LSAS is responsible for authentication, so a common tool like Mimikatz is often used uh, to extract credentials from LSAS, and with this new ASR rule, this is no longer possible. And now the block credential stealing from Windows Local Security Authority subsystem, as this rule is called, changed from not configured to configured and default mode is set to block preventing access. Interesting change and hopefully will block some of uh, these mimic hats and similar exploits. So take a look and make sure that it's enabled on your systems. And we've got some controversy about a popular extension uh, used uh, to access uh, Facebook accounts. The extension is available, available for Google Chrome, and with that was also available for the privacy-focused Brave browser, but Brave now blocked the extension for its abuse of a user token, at least according uh, to Brave. The problem here is that Facebook makes a user token available that does allow programmatic access uh, to Facebook data without any additional uh, user interaction, like you may typically be used to for things like OAuth and such, where uh, you have to give an application permission to actually access your data. Whether or not this is really as much a Facebook problem or whether this extension or LOC here is overstepping its bounds, really hard to tell. I'll link to the complete story on the register, which sort of represents both sides of the conversation here. And Google's Project Zero, which of course does quite a bit of notifications to vendors about zero-day vulnerabilities, did publish some statistics about how long it does take vendors to actually fix these zero-days that are reported. And the good news here is that the time is shrinking. Three years ago, it was an average of 80 days, and this now dropped to 52 days. Probably even more important that only one one particular vulnerability was fixed beyond the 90-day deadline plus 14-day grace period. Now, the grace period is still an important part here. 14% of bugs required a grace period, but still bugs are being fixed and are being fixed relatively quickly. Of course, you still need to apply the patches in order to actually mitigate the problem. 
And well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.